<laughs> Byron, hello. Ah, if you can hear me, thanks for having me on. That. And, uh, yeah, my my thing is, I, I'm pretty sure I called you guys in October, and I said it either goes hot or it goes cold, and cold is the Cold War like we had against the Russians. Well, it looks like the great transition, Biden's sliding in, and we're going to go full-blown Cold War with China. It was exactly 30 days to the date of that election, you know, uh, I think it was December 3rd, that they gained their quantum supremacy. Right. So they whooped Google's tail and made our most uh, highest priced, one of the top uh, picks of stock, if you will, uh, made it like minced cheese. They just said, oh, yeah, Google, yeah, they're nothing. We're the Chinese. We're coming in clean, and uh, we've got your great leader, Mr. Biden, to smooth transition at all for us and we'll see you guys on the flip side 2030 we'll be the superpower and y'all are good so tell tell the folks about a little bit about what you're talking about with that quantum supremacy that that involves quantum computing technology and we've talked about that on the show but you've talked about that as well on the show before but tell tell us exactly what you mean by quantum supremacy uh i believe if I was an English or uh, Chinese speaking fellow, I could explain it better, but it's called the Zheng Zhuang. Zheng Song. It was uh, noted in Wired on December 3rd that they uh, definitely beat us. What, what the third most powerful computer in the world could calculate would take two billion years. It took them minutes to yeah. calculate. Yeah. So it just puts things in perspective. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's so amazing is the power behind this quantum computing. So what you're saying yeah. is that the third most powerful computer in the entire world would take billions of years to run a particular calculation, and this Chinese quantum supercomputer can do it in mere minutes. So two billion years, and by the way, the third most powerful computer in the world is not slow. It's not the PC that you've got at home that you've had for 10 years. This is a super fast super powerful computer but even it would take billion billions of years to run the calculation and you've got a quantum computer that can do it in minutes i mean how do you it's hard to even uh conceive it really of that elections uh it really helps during you know they have that upper hand kind of like if you recall the uh 60 minutes special about how these computers for these investment firms got closer to the New York Stock Exchange in order to manipulate the speed of the transactions. Well, this thing's over in China. It can't even be detected, and it's picking up uh, things minutes before those seconds that matter. I mean, right. they, they call them fractoseconds. It's not minutes. It's, it's fractional, but it's a huge advantage. Uh, so, you know, if they've got us, so be it. What are we going to do? We're going to go cold, and we're going to try and beat them and move forward. But, again, you've got Biden in there. He's good about peaceful transition, just like you've got the good old Bill Gates. He's, he's like, saying on MSNBC one day, no, 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 we would never, you know, be aggressive or, or take a, a stance against China. But we would we would transition and and it would all work out. We'd make sure that we covered our bases. You can't cover your bases when somebody's three bases ahead of you. The whole place. Right. right. <laughs> I'm done. You know, I know that this is all happening. I'm not worried about it. I just got to keep my guns closer. See ya. <laughs> well, Byron, thanks for the call. Now, thanks, are you Byron. are you you have just a minute to stick around because I wanted you to say something about 2030, which you mentioned earlier. I think it's going to take 10 years to allow the American people to uh, accept the transition of no longer what it's like being a superpower around the world uh, or no longer being the single position of democracy for the world or, let's say, uh, the, the, the beacon for the world. I think that that's what it is. It, you're just going to have to transition people into, you know, $7 a gallon is is fine like they did in Europe and you know, uh, for for a gallon of gas, and then 
you know, twenty dollars for your, you know, milk. You know, things that happened in Russia. You know, when their ruble went to eighty thousand per dollar in the eighties. Right. And now they're like, I think, uh, what eighty dollars per dollar or eighty rubles per dollar. You know, the transition is, it's never fast. It's like the lobster effect, the the slow erosion effect. <laughs> and the Chinese have been ahead many times before. They played the long game, and now they're ahead of. Yeah. Out of us. Yeah. Well, and they've got a friend in the White House now, right? They've got Hunter what? Biden. Their 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 friend, their spokesperson, is the son yep. of our president. And of course, that doesn't get any coverage in the media. No, nothing is said about that. All of that came out before the election, and there was a nearly complete blackout in the media on that subject. In fact, they polled people who voted for Biden after the election, and they said if they would have known about the issues with Hunter Biden, they wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden, which to me is just – I mean, it's unfathomable that our media wouldn't report that. It is a true national security issue. Uh, that I will say – go ahead. They, they, did, they did allow in Texas the embassy to be closed under the Trump administration. But what were they doing that day, burning all that stuff? in the middle of the courtyard, not allowing our own people to come in and shut that thing down on the spot. That was the Chinese embassy in Texas. Does everybody remember that from the World News? Sure, in they Houston. Do right. They do tell us. Hey, they I, do tell us everything. I've been to that embassy because to get a visa to go to China, you've got to go to the uh, – it's, it's a consulate. you got to go to the consulate that's in your area. And, and for Florida, we fell under the consulate there in Houston. So I had to go there to get the to visa to go to China years ago. And, um, you know, anyway, what the Trump administration said, and we have no reason to believe it's not the case. I mean, in fact, we would expect that it would be true, is that that was an absolute hub of Chinese spying. And then he ordered that consulate shut down. And like you said, lo and behold, they were like destroying stuff. They're burning papers, burning computers, surely, and other things to, I mean, we were speculating, but you would think to destroy the evidence of whatever spying had been going on there. How about the Russians in New York when Obama was elected into, and he immediately, upon taking power, the Russians slipped out of that area of New York. Remember that? That was on the world news. Yeah. They tell us. The way it is is this. Either want to hear it and accept it, or you just want to go on with your bad self and think that, Oh, yeah, China doesn't want anything to do with America's power and seat of position and great position around the world. They don't want to get on that Z guy. Uh, he's a nice guy. Look at him. He looks so friendly. <laughs> he he does, does have a... He's a cuddly little bear with nuclear bombs under his armpit. He has a right. kind face. So, Byron, what do we do? <laughs> that We're doing it. We're transitioning. Just talking. Oh, we're transitioning. Oh, we're well, problem. Byron, you recommend learning kids. Mandarin, maybe. Try to take up yeah, Mandarin. I got, my kid, I got my kid going to school, learning some Mandarin. We're going we're gonna to go through the great transition. That's all it is. It's okay. All, all right, Byron. Thanks so much yeah. for the call, man. Great to hear Thanks, from you Byron. always. Yeah, love Bye. having you on. Thank you for listening to the Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard. And if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.